Hi, this is the next uh, video lecture for Introduction to Machine Learning. We are talking about random forests and now we want to take uh, a look at how these different trees and forests and KNNs perform under bagging or without bagging um, and kind of uh, see how this works out on, on real um, data sets. Okay, so we want to compare the performance of random forest against different stable and unstable methods in their bagged and non-bagged variants. So specifically in our benchmark study that we're doing, we'll look at classification trees by themselves, just a single tree. Implementation is uh, in our part, the maximal depth of the tree is 30. So that's a fairly complicated tree. Um, for a split to be attempted, we have to have at least 20 observations in, sorry, at least 20 observations in a node. And we are going to prune that tree with a complexity parameter, parameter of uh, 0.01. Okay. Um, now, we can also do bagging for this. So we'll just take a classification tree with these hyperparameters, but we'll also do 50 bagging iterations. Yeah, so we'll use a bagged tree, okay? Um, and similar to that, we'll do a random forest with 50 trees, but, and this is important, yeah? So here we have a tree that's not bagged. Here we have a tree that's bagged, and here we have 50 trees that are bagged, and additionally, and this is what distinguishes random forests from other bagging methods. Additionally here, we do this random feature subsampling that the random forest is, uh, is using in order to create a decorrelated ensemble. Yes. So that's the difference between the bagged tree and a real random forest. It's a feature subsampling, random feature subsampling. Okay, we'll compare that with a very stable method so that's the k-nearest-neighbors method. Here we're using the seven nearest neighbors. And we're also um, going to see how k-nearest-neighbors works when we do bagging on top of it. Yeah? Um, we are evaluating the performance of these methods by tenfold cross-validation. So we take a data set, split it up into ten folds, and then do ten splits where we train the data on we train the model on 90% of the data and we leave out 10% of the data. And the performance measure that we'll use here is just the mean misclassification error on the test folds. Yeah, so we get uh, 10 estimates of the <clears throat> test um, of the misclassification rate for every of these data sets. Which data sets are we using? Um, classical benchmarking data sets from the ML bench, ML bench package. There's the glass data set. 214 observations, 10 features, the Ionosphere data set, 351 observations, 35 features, the Sonar data set, and the Waveform data set. Yeah, so some of these are um, multi-class problems. Here we have six levels. Some of these are binary. Here we have just good or bad, MRR, and this is a three-class problem. Okay, so but we are just looking at misclassification. All right, um, this is the result. This is what this looks like. So we have, again, we're doing cross validation. So we're getting out 10 estimates of the misclassification rate on each data set for each method. Now, um, these are the four data sets, glass, ionosphere, sonar, and waveform. And if we look at that, well, let's, let's, take it, um, let's take it step by step. So we'll, we'll first do um, the tree-based one. So we look at R part, R part bagged, and random forest. Okay? And here we can see nicely, I think, the effect of first bagging. Yeah? So bagging in every, in every, on every, each of these data sets, by bagging, we get a much better model. Yeah, the misclassification rate for the bagged version of the classification tree is always much lower than for the original single trees. Okay, so that's the first lesson we see here. Then now let's compare the bagged 
trees to the random forest, which additionally decorrelates the ensemble by random feature subsampling. And again, we see systematically here, there is, um, well, there is another improvement here. It's sometimes it's more clear than in other cases, here for, but it's at least as good in terms of the median. And it usually um, has, um, it even has, it either has a lower median or it has a lower max, lower minimum. Yeah, so that decorrelating these trees seems to help as well. Um, and now let's look at uh, K and N. So if you look at the differences between K and N and K and N bagged, they are always very, very similar. Yeah, much less, uh, much less um, change between the bagged and the non-bagged version than between R part and R part bagged. Yeah, if you look at that, this is systematically lower. This is slightly lower. This is systematically lower. This is definitely systematically lower here that just mostly stays very much the same and is also fairly stable i would say yeah so what can you take away from that well bagging does help if the baselines in the ensemble are high uh, have high variability so they're sensitive to small changes in the training data that is not the case for the k nearest neighbors classifiers because it is very stable with regard to small changes in the data set. Why is that? Um, think about a two class problem and think about a really nearest neighbor based classification. So we're just looking at the nearest neighbor. Yeah. So when, what, what has to change in the data for um, a classification based on the nearest neighbor rule to change in that scenario? Well, first of all, it has to be the case that that observation that was the nearest neighbor in the original data set is not drawn into the bootstrap sample that we are using in this bagging iteration. Yeah. But, I mean, it's fairly likely that it is, right? So, but because the probability of getting into a bootstrap sample is 63%. Yeah, so in 63% of the cases, the nearest neighbor just won't change by bootstrap bagging. Yeah. Um, but that's not even enough. I mean, even if the nearest neighbor uh, that used to be our nearest neighbor isn't part of the bootstrap sample, in order for that to change around our prediction, the new nearest neighbor that is now part of the bootstrap data set yeah, would have to have a different label than the one that didn't make it into the bootstrap sample. So, I mean, if we are in a fairly homogeneous region of our classification feature space, that's very unlikely to happen. So, k nearest neighbor is very, very robust to small changes in the data set, to bootstrap sampling changes in the data set. So, bagging doesn't really help here. All right. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.